Hello everyone and welcome back to Shanahan Militaria. In today's video what we're covering is the Mark 6 helmet and basically how to change it from your standard infantry type helmet into a public order helmet so what bits and pieces you will need to do that. Bit of history about the uh, Mark 6 helmet. Come into service, there's two dates for it. It initially started coming into service in 1984 and then it had its more widespread issue in 85. There's two different types of Mark 6 that you will come across. One is the texture type which this one is and the other one is the smooth type. The texture type came in uh, after 98 so between the initial issue and 98 you will find the smooth type ones. Um, so that's basically how you tell. There's also uh, on some of them there is actually a manufacturing sticker and stuff on the inside that you can tell. They come in different sizes, small, medium, large and extra large. This is a small, this is actually a medium. Uh, the uh, Mark 6 helmet is made of ballistic nylon, it's not Kevlar. The Mark 6A, which had two main changes, it's made of Kevlar and they changed the top of the harness on the inside. They made it like, there's like a mesh square in there rather than the, the ring type you'll see. I'm going to take this one off the uh, mannequin's head now shortly and we'll have a quick look at it and we'll have a look at the items that you will need to turn a standard Mark 6 infantry helmet into a public order or riot helmet. The, the helmet now off the mannequin's head. We're just going to have a quick look at the inside of it. So you will see um, at the top of the, of the helmet, shall we say, you have just a plain string with four pieces to uh, attach that string. That's for the top of your head to uh, sort out the depth that you want the helmet to be worn on your head. And it's just simply by opening and loosening that string. You have a, a, a brow, or sorry, you have a, a pad for the front of your head and you have a, a pad for the back of your head. Uh, these two extra cutouts here on the inside are to make it easier for the wearing of head protection or ear, ear protection like headphones, um, communication headsets, things like that. You have a leather backing on the, behind the chin strap to uh, stop it from wear and tear on your chin. Now, where to find the manufacturing marks and things on these helmets? You'll find them either on a sticker, it's like a silver sticker, either on either side of where the ears should be. Or you will find them here on the back of this. No, I don't know if the picture can make that out. Or, but there is actually a sticker there. And it's 2008, I believe, this one was manufactured. So that's a, a, a pretty much a look at the helmet. So we're going to put the helmet to one side. And we'll actually look at the kit that you need to convert this into the public order riot helmet. Now we have the kit on the uh, table. We're going to have a quick look at it. So it comes in, in shall we say, three parts if you exclude the helmet. You have the neck protector, you have the sockets or the connectors to attach to the helmet and you have the visor. Now the uh, neck protector pretty much it's, um, actually we can, we can look here so it's, you have a, the, the label here on the top of it. So it's protector nap or the, what they call the nap of the neck, you have the NATO stock number, you have the date of the issue and you have the contract number. Um, there's a wire that runs the edge of it here to give it shape for when it's actually on the helmet and how it connects is the uh, on the inside the, the part of the helmet you will find two straps that connect to I'll just move this to one side here a second you will two, find two straps that are actually connected to this uh, plug shall we say so when you pop out that plug you will be able to fit, fit your connector and the strap that is here on the inside basically fits through here to fasten it. You have velcro parts as well. You have one here at this side, you have one at this side. So these velcro parts are actually stuck to your helmet and then these velcro onto that. Um, and then the back of your three point harness goes through this slot right here. So that's the uh, neck protector. So you will see them, the helmets worn with this and without this. Um, the idea pretty much with the actual kit was that every helmet could be converted in the British Army and it saved on them having to keep them in stores for prolonged period of times 
that the soldiers could just go draw this kit and be given a quick lecture or be shown by an armourer or an ordnance guy how to convert their helmets and they could be let go do it. Now these are the actual connectors you have a left and you have a right how you know the left or right is you this is the right side is they will follow the curve of the helmet there's an actual curve piece here so this bolt and this top lug as well you'll see there's a little piece here on the top of this so these two are basically blanks they're popped out this piece is set in it's bolted in and then you have your connector for your visor you will see soldiers that did repeated tours in Northern Ireland leaving these on their helmets and so they could just connect on and off the visor. Uh, earlier on in the war, we're going to talk about something now. So earlier on in the conflict, or shall we say the war, whatever you want to call it, op uh, Operation Banner, um, you did not see the soldiers wearing helmet covers on their helmets. The reason for that was the material that the helmet covers were made of at the time, if the soldier ended up coming in contact with a petrol bomb or a flame or anything like that, the helmet cover could melt and end up sticking to the soldiers. That's why they wouldn't wear their helmet covers. So later on, they came with the DPM issued helmet covers and they also should have a tag on the inside of them with batch numbers and things like that. Um, I'll probably cover another video how to put this on the actual helmet, but you will see them with helmet covers. And then you will also see them, obviously the most important piece of it, the visor. You do see different types of visors, you see some without this piece, the protector to stop stuff going down between the actual helmet and the visor. You will see them thicker, if you see them thicker, the uh, plexiglass is small but thicker and it's normally about a quarter of an inch thick, or possibly even a half an inch thick. They were designed for ordnance guys, guys in the bomb squads and things like that. And they actually have a different shape, they're slightly longer than this regular visor and on these ones, put my hand behind it so you can see it you will actually see visor the lot number or the NATO number and the year of manufacture this one's made in 2002 and then here you have your little connecting pieces so if I can find a connector for this side that will be this one so when you find the connector what actually happens is there's a little piece is like a little key so the slots into the key into the thing and you just turn that and let your helmet locked, pretty much. All right. So there you have the kit that is required to turn a Mark Six helmet into a public order riot helmet. So if you like what we provide here at Shanahan Militaria, please like, please subscribe, and please hit the notification button. If you would like to get in contact with the channel, as always, the email will be um, on top of the video description. Thank you.